Welcome to this presentation. Um, I'm going to talk about the news in IBM SPF Statistics 21, and this is a demo recording part two. In the first part of the recording, I was talking about the Monte Carlo simulation and also about that you, are, uh, you can open Cognos files and also the client server technology. In this recording, I'm going to do a demo about the improved productivity. So I leave this PowerPoint presentation and go to statistics 21. The first news is that you can read Cognos data. And I'm not going to do that now. I'm going to a file that is already open, that's employee data. And I would like to compare this employee data to a file with the same employees, but it's two months earlier. And I would like to compare the salary, because I know that some people have got another salary. And I would like to investigate this. This could, could also be valued for you if you're comparing two data files that should be equal. So I go to the new command that you can find in the data menu, and this is included in all, my, all modules. So I go to the compare data sets. Sorry, I, this is just in the base module. And I then go to the external SPS statistics data file to find out which data file I would like to compare this with. So I go to my file that's called personal, and please and open that one. Then it will find out for me which variables are the same in the both files. The personal number, that's the case ID, and then we have these four variables that is common in both files. Then I just click on OK. And now I get some information about the two data files, about the mismatch I had. And I can see in this table that there are 10 people that has a salary that is different in these two files. It's two months between these. So it could be that some people have got a higher salary after the two months. If we go to that, that table here, that is a more detailed table, we can see on the first person, we can see that in the active file that is open right now, the number one, the person has got 18,000. And the month, uh, two months before, it was 16,000. So the two you see here is from the other compared data file. And we can also see that we have a change here. This person was working for category number three and has moved to category number four. So maybe that's why this person got another salary. We can also see other here, for example, this person has increased the time, working time, from 38 hours to 40 hours. So that's maybe why this person has got a different salary. So this was one way to do comparisons between two data files. You can also compare two data files in the metadata, the information about the variables. And I will show you what I mean with that. Here, you have the variable view. And that's the metadata. So for example, the value label is interesting to maybe compare between two data files, especially if you are working with follow-ups. Then maybe there is some changes between the two files. So I'm going to compare this to another file. I'm going to the data compare data sets again. The external file, this time is personal three redefined and continue with that. The person number is the ID and the other variables is the common in both. Now I go to the attributes and change to compare the data dictionaries. So I can just click on the boxes I would like to compare between the two files in the metadata. And then OK. And OK again. So now to the results and see if there are some differences. And we can see a little bit here. Here we can see that there is a mismatch 
We can see here on the value three, the vision three, there is a mismatch. Asia is in the active file, and Asia region is the new value label in the other compared data file. So then we have a mismatch. Then we have the, the mismatch here. In the active file, the job category number eight has, we don't have that category in the active file, but in the new data file, that we have training. So there is a mismatch. That's good information for me to know. So this was about the data compare. And now I'm going back to the data file again. And we can see that we have got two new variables that is telling me information about each individual. So here we can see this person number three has a mismatch. And that was the person with the 18,000 in salary. We also had a mismatch here. So that's one of the news. Another news when you are now in the data set is that you can just mark two variables like this, the salary and the division, for example. And if I right click now and then go to the descriptive statistics, I will get immediately some information about these two variables that was marked. So I can see the division frequencies and I can see the statistics for the monthly salary. Then we have the merge files improvements. So I'm going to close this file and I would like to open another file. And that's the one that's called personal here. It's employee data, it's a little bit more compared to the other one. And I would like to have the attitudes here in the end. And the attitudes, they are in another file. So I would like to merge these two files. The common variable for both is this one, ID, the ID of the people. And we, this one is also a key variable. Uh, the earlier versions of statistics had a demand that you were required to have this ID sorted. But that's not anything that you need to have anymore. So just to demo this, I would like to just sort, sort the salary. So you can see that, no, we don't have any sorting in the ID variable, but it's going to work anyway. So go to the data, merge file commands, add variables, and I will search for my attitudes. And we have it. personal attitudes. Continue. And then we have the ID that is my matching variable, the key variable. So I put it into the key variable system. And I, this is a new row you see here. Cases are sorted in order. I, w I will not make any marking here. I just click OK. And now we will see that I get some new variables here in the end of the file that is coming from the other side. And another thing that is new and the safe thing is that we have got a new name. It's a new file that has been opened called Untitled. And that's very good because then I'm, I don't have to be afraid that I would like to, I would destroy my original file. That's saved already. So now I can save this into a new name if I would like to save this. Save as merged, merged file, I will call it merged file. And now to a new command here, encrypt file with password. So I can have a password on this file. So I choose that one and click on the save. And then I would I must specify. So we call this password. So that's my password password. I had to print it, type it in twice. Then OK. And then I close this one. If I now want to open this again, open data and merge file, I will get the question about the password. And if I just click something wrong here, this will happen. I will get an error message. So I really have to write the the correct password. So we'll try again. 
the password simply should be password. And now it's opened. So you really have to remember the password, otherwise it's not possible to open the file. Then I'm going to go through some uh, news in the tables when you're working with tables, as I know that many people are, do they are doing that to be more effective. So I'm going to do a table, and it doesn't matter if you're working with tables in the script statistics or other of the commands. I'm going to work with the custom tables. And this is what I'm going to investigate. I'm going to see about the monthly salary and the age would be interesting also. To see what I'm doing, I'm working with the compact. So that's one very good thing to work with. I would like to see if the salary is different between gender and what they are working with, the job category. And then click OK. So here is my results. If I double click on this, I'm coming into the edit level. So I will have different menus. I would like now to show you the thing that is the sort command. You can sort the values or the categories. So I would like to sort the values of the salary. So just right click on the marked area and sort rows ascending. And then you will see that the service job category has the lowest salary and the manager has the highest one. You can also you take the categories and sort them like this. So we start with A, B, C, and so on. So we can see another sorting. If I would like to see these categories, numbers, instead of the value labels, then and one of the news is that you can go to the view and go to the value label or variable label. And you can choose the value. And as you see now, we get the values of the job categories instead. This was possible before, but then you have to go to the option in statistics. So more time to do that. This is much more smoothly. If I would like to have both codes and the value labels, I just go to the view again and change to the both. And now we have both the code and the category value label. You can also change the language. And if I go to view languages here, but as you see, we don't have any other language like Swedish or Danish, just this one. So German, for example, is like this. And then we get the statistics, middle left, instead of mean values. So now I'm going to do a very big table to show you the pain. And uh, I'm going to do custom tables again and just take some new variables into this one and take this. Now we will get a very big table. So if I double click on this, I will get a new menu. And in this menu, we have something called view navigation, and that's new. So we will get a pane, like a map that we can have here in the background, and I can just drag this blue square, and as you see, I scroll here in my big table. So that's something that is new. Then we have some news in the help. If I go into the descriptive statistics and do a cross ta tables between, for example, the job category, and the gender, and take some statistics for that, chi square. If I double click on this, I can get help as before, like just going to watch this. I can also just click on one of the cells and get a yellow box uh, with some other information. So that's new. Then if we are going back to the um, the tables here again, I go to this table. Some of the news, if I go here to the edit, uh, we can delete a row. Like I take the number one here, the manager. I click twice and then right click and I click delete. 
And this is different from hide categories. You can hide categories also. We can take numbers five and six and hide them. So when you hide, you just right click and hide category. If I now want to get back some of the categories, I normally use this one, show all categories. And I get, I get the five and six back, but not the one, that's the first one, because I deleted it. And some people wanted this, and now we have it in the program. If you would like to put in an extra row in the table, just go to one of the categories like this, and then insert row before and off, or after. I take after, and then you will get a new one here. I can just put in something like trainee. So put in it. I write something, and then I click somewhere else. So this is how you change some of the some of the contents in the table. Now I'm going to the last thing, just telling you about the help that you have. And you already know something called case studies or tutorial. It's very good because I'm going to talk about the new simulation that you can find in the base module. And you can choose between equations or use old model files for doing simulation. If you would like to know more, then you can go to the help and get some information about that tutorial. And this will start the web and you get into the help. I really recommend to use this help a lot because there is a lot of help that you can use. I, I really use this a lot. So, if I would like to go to the case studies, we have it here. Case studies, I go to the statistics base, and then if I scroll down, I can see the simulation here in the bottom. And I just click on the first one here, and you can go through this and see how you use the simulation and also how to understand all the results, because this is maybe something new for you. So just click on the right button here, and you will have some information about this. Very, very good help. And this was what I would like to talk about in the news of Statistics 21. Thank you very much for joining me.